Charles County Public Schools Office of School Safety and Security and the Office of Risk Management have partnered with the Department of Emergency Services to create a trauma kit that may be used if a student or staff member suffers from a life-threatening trauma-related injury. About 1,900 trauma kits have been placed throughout Charles County Public Schools buildings, including one in almost every classroom, the nurse's office, cafeteria, gymnasium, and main office at each school. The information you are about to receive will expose you to basic concepts of treating traumatic life-threatening injuries. The concepts and curriculum are similar to commercial instruction being provided to first responders and the general public. This video will introduce you to the capabilities of the contents of the Charles County Public Schools Trauma Kit. This is not a certification, but it builds on the information Charles County Public Schools and the Department of Emergency Services have provided to employees since 2018. If you have questions about this training, please reach out to Charles County Public Schools Office of School Safety and Security. Hello, my name is John Fowler. I'm the Chief of Emergency Medical Services for the Department of Emergency Services, and we're going to go over your trauma kit today. This bleeding control kit was designed to keep the maximum amount of life-saving efforts and tools in the bag, but keeping it as simple as possible. So, kit comes sealed in this aluminum foil wrapper that's vacuum packed. It's got a tab notch, so you simply peel that open, and it's got a Ziploc opening. Inside each kit, you're going to have two elastic compression bandage rolls, ACE wraps. You're going to have two SWAT T tourniquets. You're going to have four flat compression gauze bandages. And you're going to have four petroleum gauze 4x4 four four bandages for use as chest seals. In addition, you'll have two pairs of medical exam gloves. The tourniquet provided to you in your uh, bleeding control kit is the SWAT T tourniquet, and it comes in the package and it's got pre zippered op or pre cut openings. So you just pull on any one of these tabs and it unveils your tourniquet. Now, basically, this tourniquet is, as you can see, it's a large, wide rubber band. It's used for temporary bleeding control until medical professionals can get there and apply a more permanent tourniquet and get you to a trauma center. As you can see, this is a rather large piece of equipment. It comes in bright orange, so you can show that there's a tourniquet applied to a victim. Instructions are pretty easily printed in large bold print on the tourniquet, in case you forget, and it's readily available on all quadrants of the tourniquet. Tourniquets should be applied only to exterior extremities, like the legs, the arm, and never applied to the neck or head. Now, depending on the size of your victim, as you can see it's a large piece of equipment, you could cut this tourniquet in half if you needed to, and get two tourniquets out of one piece of equipment. Application of the tourniquet is as follows. High and tight on the affected extremity. Apply, stretch, wrap,
This will hold the tourniquet in on itself while holding compression on the wound and stopping the hemorrhage. If you have time, check for a pedal pulse to make sure that bleeding is controlled and blood flow to the extremity is cut off. Applying the SWAT T tourniquet to a pediatric patient is as simple as the same as an adult. You examine the affected extremity. You're going to apply the tourniquet as high and tight on the affected extremity as possible. Again, you're going to stretch, wrap, stretch, wrap, as many times as it takes until hemorrhage control is accomplished. At the end, you simply tuck, and the tourniquet is applied, reassessing pedal pulses and making sure that hemorrhage control is achieved. In addition, the tourniquet comes with a tourniquet indication bracelet, which can be applied to the affected extremity. In case folks miss the bright orange tourniquet, they'll also have a tourniquet bracelet, which you just indicate the time that the tourniquet was applied. The flat hemorrhage control compression gauze comes in a package that is also pre-tabbed and simply opens by removing the tab and pulling the materials out. This bandage can be used for controlling a knife wound or a penetrating wound. It can be used as a standalone piece of equipment or in conjunction with the um, elastic bandage wrap. For penetrating gunshot wounds, you would simply take this compression dressing, place it inside the bleeding wound, and pack the wound tightly and firmly until no more gauze can be entered into the wound area. Once you have the wound packed, simply place the excess over top of the wound, hold pressure, using the provided elastic wrap, hold, and tightly wrap the bandage in place. Okay, the tighter the better. Making sure that pressure is evenly applied to the gunshot wound or impacted wound. provided metal clips to secure the bandage on itself and it'll temporarily hold the wound packing material in place until medical help arrives. Whereas puncture wounds present themselves as a hole or jagged hole, laceration wounds are slightly different. They present themselves as a long cut or a short cut, but either way they can be treated with the same two basic materials provided in your kit. A 
again. Simply pack your wound with the compressed bandage into the hole of the affected wound as much as possible, making sure you get all areas in there. This controls the bleeding, the pressure creates a clot, and all this can be later removed when the patient gets to a surgical intervention trauma center. Any excess that you may have can simply be placed on top. And again, secured using the provided elastic wrap bandage. Wrap tight, evenly covering the impacted wound area. The more pressure, the better. It helps control the bleeding. When you're done, you can either use the provided clips or you can wrap the elastic bandage in on itself. If hemorrhage control is really bad and if needed, you can use your uh, wound packing gauze in conjunction with the provided Swati tourniquet. And you would simply pack as previously described, hold pressure on the wound, Cover with the tourniquet using the instructions provided. You just stretch, wrap, and finally tuck. This should hold the tourniquet in place and your wound is now secure. All right. The last thing we wanted to show you included in your kit is for chest wounds or back wounds, penetrating wounds to the chest and back. Provided in your kit are four petroleum gauze four by fours, which when opened, they look like this. Now what this does is it provides a temporary cover for penetrating wounds so air can't escape or enter the lungs. So you can restore breathing for your patient. And what you do is you simply wipe away the blood in the infected area. You would apply a layer of petroleum gauze over the hole if needed. Try apply a second. This should create an airtight seal. And using your elastic bandage, you would wrap. This works for both adult and pediatric patients. Now, when EMS comes, you're gonna let them know what you did and they're gonna apply a professional um, uh, chest seal on this patient. This is just a temporary measure to control the impacted area until EMS arrives and the patient can be extricated to a trauma center because that's where they really need to be. We hope that you never have to use the provided bleeding control kits ever. But in this day and age, in the event of an unforeseen emergency, the kits, the tools, and the knowledge is here for you to use. Be a hero and save a life. Thank you for watching.
We appreciate all the attention that you give and we appreciate what you do for the community and for our children. Thank you.